Hi everybody and welcome to exercise 5 and in this problem they're asking us to find bases for subspaces, a problem that we did a while back in this course. Um, this is a problem in three parts and in this video we're just going to be looking at part A and the instructions are a little bit unusual in this problem so you might notice that they, they give us a formula for a linear transformation that linear transformation, though, only applies to parts B and C of this problem. Part A is entirely independent of that function that they gave us. Okay, so in part A, we're just looking at this subset of R3 and asking, well, actually, they tell us it's a subspace, and seeing if we can find a basis for that subspace. All right, so let's work through part A together here. So we might start by... I'm just going to give that the name W just to make this easier to talk about. Okay, and we can notice that W can be pulled apart. Okay, there, there are three variables that are kind of, or three parameters that are kind of describing it. So we can rewrite that as A times, and then looking at where the, where the A terms appear in our tuple, we would come up with that plus B times, 3, negative 4, 1, plus C times 1, 0, 3. That's just a algebraically equivalent way of writing this set that they're giving us. Okay, and that's convenient because notice that that's the very definition of the span of the three vectors that I'm underlining. Okay, so we can note that W has been rewritten in the form of the span of those three vectors. Okay, so what we've done so far is to find a generating set for W. Okay, I'm gonna call it G. So G equals one, negative two, negative one, three, negative four, one, and one, zero, three. is a generating set. Is it a basis for W? Okay, well, we don't know for sure because we, we don't know if that set is linearly independent. If that were also a linearly independent set, the answer would be yes, G would also be a basis. But we need to check that, okay? And we can do that by using our standard technique. You can form a matrix where the columns of the matrix are your vectors. We talked about how way back earlier in the course, if you do row operations on this, um, the pivot columns will tell you the vectors that you need to keep in order to have a basis. Okay, so if you do row operations on this, okay, let's just work through it. If you took two times the first row and added it to the second row, you would get zero, two, two. And then if you add the first and the third row, you're gonna get zero, four, four. And then notice that the second and the third row are multiples of each other. So if you do another row operation, okay, maybe reduce the 2, 2 down to a 1, 1 by dividing through by 2, you're going to get a row of zeros down here. Okay, so there's an echelon form for your matrix. And we notice that the pivot positions, the only pivot positions are in the first and the second column, okay, which tells us that we can, get, we can reduce this generating set to a basis by just taking the two vectors that correspond to those pivot columns. Okay, thus, beta equals one, negative two, negative one, three, negative four, one. That must be a basis. For the set that we're calling W. 